So you missed the boat on Tesla's stock run up in 2020, and you want something that could go vertical like TSLA did last year. What is the next big thing? Kathy Wood at ARK Invest says it's genomics. Let's take a look at why. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Watch to the end of this video to find out about our 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Awesome. First, whenever I'm doing a financially related video, I want to make very clear I am not a financial planner, nor an analyst, nor even a very good investor. I'm just giving my own opinion here. Of course, do your own research if you're interested in investing, etc., etc. I also want to note here that Kathy Wood, Stephen Mark Ryan from Solving the Money Problem, and many others maintain that Tesla is still a great investment over the long term. If you plan to keep the stock for 10 years or so, there's still a ton of upside to Tesla itself, in my opinion, of course, do your own research, blah, blah, blah. But I just wanted to make that clear also. But what if you want to get in on a stock that is underperforming right now? This is where Kathy Wood says genomics is the next big thing. Which of your current holdings, Kathy, do you think will supply the biggest lift in the next five years? Tesla is still in the running, but I would have to say the biggest upside surprises are going to come from the genomic space. Uh, and that's because the convergence of DNA sequencing, uh, artificial intelligence, and gene therapies, importantly, CRISPR gene editing, are going to uh, cure disease. Why is this so? A lot of it has to do with the stock tech bubble of the year 2000. At that point, genomics was a huge part of the stock bubble, helping to drive up the price of tech stocks and the market in general way above what it could maintain. Remember, this was before things like CRISPR or Cas9 even existed. Even the Human Genome Project wasn't finished until 2003, and it started in 1990, so it was a 13-year project. When U.S. law ended up dictating that genomic information would not be patentable, that helped to really pop the massive bubble that was happening and help create the massive tumble in biotech stocks in the early 2000s. And by the way, just as a note here, genomics is not genetics. 23andMe and other companies perform tests and determine some really cool things about you as a person, given your genetic makeup. But this is just a small subset of genomics, which deals with not just some markers, but the whole genome, and is not just diagnostic, but potentially therapeutic as well. So finding out you come from Vikings is not really genomics, it's genetics. So I just want to make that really clear. So back to the stock bubble of 2000. Even though this was 20 years ago, Wood notes that people are still very skittish about investing in genomics-related stocks because of the losses people took when the 2000 bubble collapsed. But technology has come a long, long way since the year 2000. CRISPR-Cas9, for example, allows for gene editing and even gene insertion. And AI machine learning is a major breakthrough in genomics as well. This technology has gone from niche in 2000 to indispensable by now. In fact, the protein folding problem that was thought potentially unsolvable was recently solved by artificial intelligence. And this opens up the door to massive leaps forward. With all of these advances, single gene-related illnesses like pediatric blindness, for example, are now within reach of being cured by gene editing. And multi-gene-related illnesses could be eradicated in the next decade or so. That convergence is going to cure disease. Now we have real science and technology surfacing the mutations in our genomic profile. And, um, and uh, as they surface those mutations, what do we see? We see the earliest manifestations of disease. And now with the combination of artificial intelligence and gene editing, we're able to both anticipate diseases and cure them potentially. In fact, the line people say might actually come true in the not too distant future. I just want to live long enough to live forever. And genomics is the bundle of related technologies that could actually make all of this happen. What of the freedom of genetic information? Well, that's been dealt with as well. While you own your own genes, these companies have been able to patent gene editing, gene therapy, and other genomics-related topics, which protects the IP that these companies have worked so hard to create. Is this too much protection? Oh, that's a thorny issue for sure, and one that needs to be dealt with on a governmental level. So what could still stand in the way of a genomics explosion? 
Number one would be regional or federal laws. This is a very complex discussion. Each nation has its own intellectual property protection levels versus consumer protections. So this is indeed a thorny gotcha issue for those companies. And two, the expense, time, and risk of development. Companies can invest literal billions of dollars and come up with nothing. And even if they come up with the next big thing, it takes an age to make it to broad distribution. Animal trials need to happen, then very limited human trials, then broader human trials. And if at any point the trials show increased risk of side effects, this potentially great technology can get derailed. And that could potentially mean a company can go from top of the world to bankrupt just like that. So is genomics a good investment in that case? Well, consider this. What if Genomex, a hypothetical company in the genomics space, develops a cure for four major forms of cancer? First, this would be a massive boon to everyone. The fact that you could get a shot to protect you from certain forms of cancer would be incredible. And second, this company, Genomex, would suddenly go from net worth of a few billion potentially to over a trillion dollars in the space of weeks or months. That is one hell of an opportunity for an investment. But which company will be successful? That's a bit like picking Tesla out of a bunch of startups in 2005. Sure, it's possible with a lot of research and knowledge of the space, but even Elon Musk would agree that Tesla was not a sure bet at all until at least as late as 2018 when they finally got the Model 3 up to mass production. And at that point, they were weeks away from bankruptcy. So, you know, it's it wasn't like they were a sure bet at all at that point. So Tesla definitely could have failed, as with any particular company in the genomic space right now. So what do you do if you're interested in investing? I see two options. Number one is to take the easy road and invest in something like ARC-G, the ARC Invest Genomics ETF. Again, this is not investing advice, just one guy's opinion. I have not purchased this ETF myself, but I'm definitely considering it at this point. And option two is research, research, and do more research and pick up a few individual stocks you think have the highest chance of success. What these are, I really don't know. I don't know enough about the space to really predict which companies are gonna be the ones with the biggest chance of success. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of each of these strategies? The advantage of option number one is that you get the experience of a team of people who know the space and a more broad-based approach that covers a lot of bases. The downside is that the returns will be smaller than you could get if you pick just a few stocks and are right about them, of course. With many more stocks in the ETF, some are going to go up and some are going to go down. So generally, you could get a good return, but not a crazy good return. The advantage of strategy number two is you could get insane returns if you pick the right horses in this race. But you need to know a lot about the space. And even if you do, you still need to get a little bit lucky with the companies you pick. Or you could lose most or all of your investment. Which one of these options will I be doing? <laughs> Option number one. I simply don't know enough about the space yet to understand which companies to pick. But over time, if I research more and I see one or two that look really promising, I could add some of them to the mix. This, for me again, seems a safe way to enter the space and put a couple of toes into the genomics water to test it out. So why even invest in this area right now? Because there is a gap between what the market in general is valuing this area as and its potential. Due to historical reasons and or ignorance in the broader market, there's what appears to be a pretty hefty undervaluing of the companies in this sector. And where there is a gap between valuation and what you think these stocks could be worth, that is opportunity. <laughs> you can get on board in that case and ride the stock train. Thanks so much for watching. Again, this is all for informational purposes. I am not a stock analyst, not even a very good investor, so take my thoughts with a grain of salt for sure. I also want to give a really big shout out to my Patreon patrons. You guys are wonderful. It's been lovely. Your support is amazing. And the conversations we're having and everything are really useful and quite informative, actually. If you're interested in joining the fun, definitely check out the link in the description. Also, a big thank you to Zenly Music for doing the intro and conclusion music. He's an amazing artist, so definitely check him out on YouTube or Instagram. And finally, if you're in the market for a new Tesla, definitely check out our referral link in the description. If you use that and order a Tesla, we both get 1000 Free supercharger miles, which is awesome. And now on to the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. It's simple. Subscribe to the channel and then make at least one comment on this video on or before January 5th of 2021. More than one comment won't give you better odds, but you're welcome to comment as much as you want. On the 6th of January, we will randomly select one lucky winner who will get brrr, a Tesla sexy coffee mug. 
just like the one I have, only this one will be unused so it's nice and clean. Again, thank you all so much for watching my videos and for subscribing to my little channel. I truly appreciate all of you. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.